You're listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and have your work build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. Hello, and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. On this episode of The Author Inside You, we have two guests, both winners of writing contests from our sponsor, Scribophile. Adam Down is a first place winner of chapter one of a novel contest. We will speak with him shortly. But first, we were asked to judge the poetry contest, and it wasn't easy, but we picked the winner. And the winner is Christmas Mixes by our first guest today, Darlene Peters. Well, Darlene, first off, congratulations on winning the poetry contest. What a feeling. Thank you so much. I was really shocked, and thank you for interviewing me and being a sponsor for Scribophile. I was really in amongst a lot of talented people and a lot of great entries, so I know it had to have been hard for you to select one. It was difficult reading over the entries and picking one that we thought was the best. But yours did stand out. I'm glad, and a lot of that is because of the help of the people on the site. I came across Scribophile by researching different writing wor- workshops because I have some writing projects that I'd like to finish, but I needed some kind of accountability for my writing projects, so I found this site and it's free, and it's easy, and everybody is so welcoming that you're just kind of drawn into it, and everybody is real encouraging, and it works on a karma system where you critique someone's work, and then once you earn so many karma points, you can share a work, and there are codes of conduct that you follow for critiquing and for, you know, being a part of the discussion forums, so it's, it's moderated, which is great. It's fantastic that there really is communities like that online that can be, you know, self-governing and people respect each other. It's nice to hear. It's so encouraging. Everyone is so encouraging. When you get critiqued, it's very constructive and it's very encouraging. It's almost like everybody wants everybody else to succeed, mm-hmm. which is Great. wonderful. And that's that's what I found in this because I'm real guarded when it comes to my writing. If I come up with a poem, you know, I think, oh, is this good? I'm kind of not that confident about it. How about you tell us about Christmas mixes? Well, there's a prompt for the poem that, you know, they ask you, what does it mean to you? And so when I started thinking, I just had this phrase in my mind that it's December again and we'll remember again, because when you think back to different holidays and you think about maybe a death in the family and we've come into the holiday missing someone Mm -hmm. or my uh, little sister was born at Christmas, around Christmas. So there's happy times and sad times. And I just started thinking that Christmas, you know, there's so much mixed into Christmas. And that's when I came up with the title as Christmas Mixes, because you've got so much mixed in there. You've got happy times, sad times. And that's a mixed bag of emotions. Yeah, exactly. Different emotions, different uh, people, because you have people that you may haven't seen in a while and you're visiting them or, you know, just just different things. So that's why I went with that title that Christmas mixes, because it really does. It just kind of mixes things up. And when I first started writing it and I started, I actually, the poem got to be very complex. I started putting in experiences and I thought, you know, I've got so much to do around Christmas and the deadline is the 18th. I really just have to simplify this. And at first I just simplified it into two lines per stanza. When I put that up for critiquing, you know, a lot of, it's interesting when you get critiques back that there are some things that some people like, like some people might like the repetition Mm -hmm. and other people like it when you are not in that repetition or you're not with the structure. I still feel like it's a work in progress. Well, we really enjoyed reading it. And to our um, listeners. Uh, we will have the poem in our show notes so everyone can scroll down or scroll left or scroll right and, <laughs> and whatever it is on your app and you'll be able to, to, to read your poem, Darlene. So that'll be fantastic. It's really interesting how you used the community to help strengthen your writing. You know, you showed it to other people 
obviously you trust them, even if you don't, you know, you've never met them. And it's really interesting how you get the, the feedback from them. And then it makes it better and better by getting more and more feedback. Oh, absolutely. And I felt kind of intimidated because there's, there's so much talent on this site. There are people who have published books, have a long career in writing. So they're just encouraging. They're willing to share their expertise. You can kind of let your guard down because you don't feel like somebody's just going to kind of beat up on you, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really a good feeling. I've had some people critique it and say, oh, you're putting too much in it. But then it's like, well, Christmas is science. Filled. Christmas can't be too much. Right. <laughs> you know, I just feel like, like I, you know, I, um, my holidays this past season, you know, we've had some deaths, we had a wedding, we've had birthdays, we, I had a lot of traveling. So when it was all done, I just, I just felt exhausted. So sometimes when you're writing something, it's almost like you're conveying what it, what it really is to you. Mm hmm. Is it too much? Well, yeah, it is kind of too much sometimes. So <laughs> yeah. tell us a little bit about the contest on Scribophile. When I first joined it, the first group that I joined on Scribophile was poetry lovers because I love I love to read poetry and I love to write poetry. And then the moderator invited me to the third door down, which is kind of a mix of everything. In in fact, they say it's stuff that doesn't go in any other drawer. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I thought that was really cute how they described that group. And there's different groups. Like I just joined a crime fiction group. So you can research which group you want to join. And like right now they have like a, an artificial intelligence contest. So they have a lot of contests in this group, which I think is really interesting. It kind of gives you that competitive nature but not in a bad way. It's it's more in a friendly way. Like if you've won before, they encourage you to encourage somebody else to to enter the contest, wow. which is really interesting. And in this group, it's just really fun. The moderator, I think, makes it really fun. Well, that's so wonderful they, for our listeners to hear that if they're looking for, it sounds like an encouraging and fun online writing community, Scribblefile is a place for them. And once you and once you start writing, it's really interesting. Back in 2011, I started working with an executive life coach, and her name is Chris Cavanaugh. And I was trying to decide if I really wanted to go further in higher education, or if I wanted to kind of branch off and find something else to do in in my life that kind of was a dream of mine. And I said, you know, I'd like to be a writer, but there's a fantasy in reality. And she says, no, you can you can be a writer. It's almost like you have to have permission, you know, mm, to mm -hmm. some or to follow a dream. And so I started making time for my writing projects. And once you share that with others, you'll find that everybody wants to write a book. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you start telling somebody about a writing project and they go and they'll say, you know, I've always wanted to write a book and they'll tell you a book that they want to write. So I think that anybody who wants to write a certain type of book just should go on the site and explore it. Even if you just like to read others' works, sure, it's a good site to, to be on. Well, Darlene, if some of our listeners are interested in reaching out and finding you, can they search for you on Scribophile? Absolutely. They can just go under the Authors tab in the menu. And under there, it says Explore Authors. And under Find a Member, you can just type in my name. You can just type in Darlene Peters. My profile will show up. I'm there with my Johnny and Hazel, my pets. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you for taking the time to enter the contest because it was fun for us to read your poem. And we appreciate you coming on our show today. That was fantastic, Darlene. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. So joining us now is Adam Down, the winner of the first novel chapter contest with his entry, the Canary and the Crow. Welcome, Adam. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, Adam, I see that you're very involved in Scribblefile. How did you choose this writing community? I heard about it through um, National Novel Writing Month, actually. Um, it's, a, it's the first time I'd heard about the site, um, as, as Scribblefile is a, is a sponsor of that. I tried that a number of times and, and failed. I mean, for anybody who isn't familiar with National Novel Writing Month, it is a month of November, essentially, where you, it encourages people around the world to write 50,000 words. Um, 
not necessarily 50,000 good words, <laughs> but, but getting people into that writing process and writing regularly. Um, and I've, I've tried that on a couple of occasions. Um, and, and obviously, I've, I've seen Scribble Files as, as, as part of that. So, so after looking at it in 2018, I joined the, the writing website in the middle of 2019, actually. Oh, great. So you're relatively new to it. I am, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so yeah, we've talked about uh, National Novel Writing Month, and it is a difficult challenge because a month mm. goes by pretty quickly. You have to write quite a few words each day to keep up with it. It does, yeah. I mean, it's it's when when you break it down, I think it's about eighteen hundred words a day. Wow, which which is a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll say now, it's it's probably not for everybody. It's not something I've actually managed, <laughs> if if I'm honest. <laughs> um, it's, I think it's really to get people who kind of have that bug and want to start trying and, and make a start at writing a novel to um, to kind of make that jump and go ahead with it. And then if you get to the end of November and you've got, I, I don't know, 10,000, 12,000, even, even 15 or 20, if that's more than you had before, right. and it's encouraged you to start and, and you've got something to work on, then, then I think it's been a success. And I think that's what I've used it as. Sure, you're on your way to, to writing. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like you don't know whether you can do it unless you try. And if if National Novel Writing Month is what you need to get started, then then it's, it's a great resource and a great tool. Excellent. On Scribify, there are so many resources for writers, and, and the contests are really a cool idea. So is this the first contest you have entered, or have you entered other contests? I've entered a few contests on there. I mean, there are a lot of groups on the website that are run by um, other members, essentially. Sure. And there are regular, I mean, sometimes as much as weekly contests on, on, on some of those groups. And I've entered a few of those. But yeah, this is probably the first the first major contest that, 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 I, that I came into and, and, and somehow I won, which is still a bit of a surprise. Quite, quite <laughs> yeah. A so yeah, so let's talk about that. That must have been a very fun day when you found out you won first place. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it was Boxing Day over here, and I just just got the the <laughs> kind of message and looked at it and went, "Oh well, that's made by Christmas." That's <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. You, you kind of go through that process of, of of maybe not quite believing it and then trying to work out, well, okay, then 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 what does that mean? I mean, how how many people kind of submitted to the contest and and what makes somebody else think that that what you've written is 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 kind of worth that second look at and and worth kind of shouting about so so that was kind of a really nice moment really well matt and i both read your entry and we're both like okay we want to hear more of this story <laughs> let's hear more about the canary and the crow we both didn't want to stop reading yeah. like it just kept like there was <laughs> and then when it did end we're like okay so i wish we could turn the page and yeah. continue reading <laughs> so have you written I, I, written beyond that I have written beyond that, yeah. I've got maybe 11 or 12 chapters at the moment, maybe oh, 25,000 wow. words. It's kind of the introduction to the characters, to the world, to the story I'm trying to tell is there. It's now getting into the nitty-gritty of the actual story at, at, at that point. Um, you, you never know when you start out exactly how many words something is going to be, but I'm, ass- I'm assuming it's going to be near 90, maybe 100,000 words. So, so we're looking at that, that quarter of the way there stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's... It's been slow going, but I, I, as it is for a lot of people, I think when they're trying to write their first novel, we're making progress, and obviously that 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 contest win um, was was really something that that has given me some some, some kind of extra interest and actually, like, yeah, th- this is worth continuing with, and this is this is something that that may work out in the long run. Right. Yes. So so what's your what's your writing process like when you wrote that chapter? I I am a a very I'm a perfectionist, which is, which is probably not great when you when you're looking to write um, <laughs> the first chapter and the, the first edit of a novel. I mean, that first chapter has been edited a number of times. It's like, no, you should be going on. You should be writing more. You should be going on to the third chapter. <laughs> Make sure you've got an entire novel. It's just, you ask yourself. I think a lot of people just starting out ask ask themselves two questions: Can I write a novel? And can I write a good novel? And they get so caught up in that second question. Uh, that they never find out the answer to the first because mm. you end up in a cycle of editing and, and looking back at yourself. And I've, I've done a bit of that. But yeah, that, that first chapter came out in probably two or three sittings, really, of, of a few hours of time. Um, I don't really plot. I'm someone who really starts a story with kind of either an, an image or a situation in my head. So for the Canary McCrow first chapter, it came into my head 
one day I, I can't I couldn't say where I was or, 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 or what I was doing but a young woman stood on train tracks and it's like as a as a writer you start thinking about the questions mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. why is she why there is, what, there what's driven her to be there what is she doing and and for something of a novel length how is she going to get out of it because <laughs> you can't really uh, <laughs> yeah yeah it could be it could be a short novel right <laughs> exactly yeah if, if if what she wants to happen would happen in that, in yeah, that yeah. And I mean, it's, we're, we're not going to be here very long yeah. Um, but yeah I, I start off with that really that that initial event that initial situation and then really riff off that and, and go from there now I'm at the point where I'm 11 12 chapters in the plotting is coming into it uh, because obviously the story moves on you introduce new characters you go to new places um, and it's all trying to weave things together and, and get to the end point that I do have in mind. It's like, as soon as I started writing, I knew how I wanted the story to end. But the, the way there is is to a large extent up to, up to well, the canary and the crow in the novel, really, where they want to go, as, as long as they get to where I want them to. And they're, they're, they're getting there. They're meandering more than I'd like, but <laughs> I'll, I'll get there eventually. Well, well, let us know when you, when you finish the novel and you have it published, and we'll have you on as a guest. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my plan is to have that, have this um, first draft finished, hopefully by the end of this year. Um, use the, the great community at Scribberfile, obviously, to, to hone it to as much of a mirror sheen as, as it can get, and then hopefully send out to publishers. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm at that point now with a lot of kind of short fiction that I've written, uh, various short stories and bits of flash fiction and stuff, which are out in the public the publication grind of it i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with mm-hmm. uh, to hear back on a number of those and and hope hope for some good news and then when it comes to to maybe looking at, at getting the canary and the pro, and the crow um placed um then i will have a nice kind of resume of um publications in various online online magazines and, and whatever to, to take to an agent and say oh, look mm-hmm. there is promise I've successfully published in places. This is worth looking at. So I think you really need that kind of background, even if it is three or four kind of short story publications, flash fiction publications, wherever you can get exposure. I think it's it, it's a great thing to do. Great. That, that's some very good advice for for our listeners who are who are thinking about writing a novel or working on a novel. If you can get a mm. chapter or two published here or there, and then you have an example of obviously someone thought my work was. I like, think that, I think so. Yeah. I mean it. I, in my mind, I think it, it, it makes people pay attention. I mean, where you can't make them like something, but you can you can demonstrate to somebody that, look, somebody's liked this work, somebody's thought it's good enough to for other people to see this, for them to kind of put it in front of a new audience. Um, and I think that's something that you can utilise and, and make people pay, at least pay attention to you and give you the time of day. Because uh, obviously, I'm, I'm non, under no illusions. There are thousands of people every year um, <laughs> looking to get agents, looking to get published, looking to get their first novel in. You've got to have something behind you and something that really stands out to succeed, I think. Right. Well, we wish you luck and congratulations again on winning. And we look forward to speaking with you when your book is published. Oh, thanks very much. That's great. Thanks for having me on. Great talking to you, Adam. Thank you. The great thing about this podcast for me is that we get to speak to different people and hear their stories. And it was really fun talking to Darlene and Adam, knowing that they won first place in a contest is always exciting. We've been telling you for some time about the great community at Scribophile. And if you're looking for some like-minded people to share your writing examples with, check out Scribophile.com. And maybe you'll be a winner of one of their contests. Until next time. Right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty.